Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna go over five simple things to help you get a better resin print. These are some of the things that I use to this very day that make a huge difference. Very simple things that you could use to get a better print out of your resin printer. So let's go. So number one, print flat connecting side up. Here's an example. So here are a couple of pieces that will intersect together to form one big base. And when I'm printing in a large print or even a small print, it doesn't matter. And I have something like this that is cut to this nature and I want to combine it to become one piece. What I would generally do is I will take this piece and print this intersecting side up. That way it has no supports attached to it. So whenever I print it out, the side is still slick. There's no divots or there's no integration in here with support marks or anything like that. And then when these two pieces are put together, they're going to fit together with a minimal seam line and they're not going to have any issues whatsoever. It's going to be minimal cleanup. They're going to fit together pretty snug and um, it's going to look good. And that way also you don't have any warpage or anything to that nature and uh, so what we'll do, I'll show you exactly what it'll look like when it's on your build plate. So we're going to go ahead and hollow these out and we're going to like, I hollow my stuff out fairly thin. So for bases, I generally go uh, just two millimeters and I use a 3d grade end fill. And so we're off to the races starting to hollow it out. Okay. So now we've got everything hollowed out. We're ready to go ahead and put our drain holes. And let's just say for the sake of time here, we got drain holes on everything. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add supports. All right, here we go. So as you see, we have supports all around it. I used auto supports. You can put your supports on there if you want to. But as you see, there is no supports here on the top. So whenever this thing gets done printing, it's not going to have any support marks on it whatsoever. So what you're going to get is a nice finished print that's going to fit together with a minimal seam work and your model is going to look great. So number two, to angle or not to angle? That is the question. Okay, for tip number two, we're going to talk about angling. So let's say if you have a flat piece just like this, the worst thing that you can do is try and print this flat to the build plate. So what's going to happen is you're going to put supports on here. You're going to have a lot of issues with suction and then the part is going to wind up being deformed and it's just not going to print right. So in this case, what I would do is I would always print this at an angle. It can be the slightest of angles. And then what I generally do is tilt it sideways and then I'll actually lift this lip up also. So what I'll do is I will lift this up at an angle. So that way I have no suction issues. The thing is not touching the build plate totally. You got an edge here that's basically touching the build plate and the rest is going to be um, just supported underneath it and it'll actually print. So the one thing that I don't have problems with is I just won't have any suction problems because you got all these supports underneath there, all this air, all this space, and uh, it's not going to draw away from the build plate whatsoever. Now, if you have anything like other pieces, such as a head or something like that, let's take a look and let's see what it looks like. So even a head sculpt, I usually don't print straight up like this. I usually bend it back a little bit. That way, if I have any supports, they're not going to be touching in the details of the face. Worst case scenario, you're going to have some supports back here. And what it looks like when it's supported is like this. Now, of course, we have to hollow the model out and use some sort of drain holes. But as you can see, it's minimal supports on here. There's nothing in the face. This is easily removed right here with just a little bit of sanding. Nothing is affecting the detail of the model and you will get a very nice print out of this. So when it comes to something like a torso, when you put it on the build plate, kind of looks like this. Again, I would go through and I would actually tilt this 
ever so slightly onto the side and ever so slightly back. That way you won't have a ton of supports on the back where all this detail is, but you're still going to draw that suction away from the model and it won't get stuck to the build plate and it'll actually print. As you can see, there's no type of supports anywhere affecting the details and you're going to get a nice clean print. Number three, print with infill, not supports. Let me show you. All right, so here we have this Darth Vader bust. And what I'm going to do is I'm first going to hollow it out. And I usually hollow this out, let's say at 1.8 millimeter. And I'm going to put 3D grid infill at 5%. You can go a little more if you want, but I would not go over the top. And I'll show you the difference between printing with grid infill versus printing with no grid infill. And you're going to see a clean difference versus a sloppy difference. So let's take a look at this one first with the infill. Okay, so as you see right here, we got Darth Vader all hollowed out with the 3D 5% grid infill. You got a lot of stabilization brackets that are attached to the sides to keep from warpage, to keep from bending or anything like that during printing. This actually stabilizes the print whenever you are printing. Now also you're using less resin than you would if you had supports in it. Um, again, stable, less supports, a lot cleaner on the inside, and it's going to be a good print when it's done. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of drain holes in here, and you're going to see the difference when we add supports, what it's going to look like. So first, let's put a couple of drain holes in here. And you can put however many you want. I'm just going to put four in here right now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to orientate this model. I'm going to tilt it a little bit, like I said just previously. And tilt it up, tilt it back a little bit. And now we're going to put supports on it. Okay, so we got supports on it. Now let's take a look at the inside, what it looks like. There are no supports in there. So the grid infill acts as a support. The system knows not to put anything in there. We still have this neat, clean appearance. And again, you're saving on resin. Now we're going to look and see what it's like without the grid infill. And we're just going to go ahead and hollow this out with none. Start on it. It's going to hollow it out with zero grid infill. There's going to be no stabilization or anything of that whatsoever on the inside. Okay, so this is what it looks like. There's nothing on the inside whatsoever. No stabilization. Um, again, you run the risk of it just not printing right. It could wave, it could shift or anything like that on the printer. But again, that's a chance you take. So now we're going to go ahead and add those drain holes like we did before. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and orientate this tilt it again so slightly. Now we're going to add supports to it. Okay, from the outside, it looks pretty much the same. All of the supports are around the same area. Now what you're going to look at on the inside is all of the supports inside. Now you could say, well, I mean, it basically is the same thing as the grid infill as far as stabilization but you would be wrong. All of these supports tend to go up and down just in one direction. There's no stabilization whatsoever. And look how much more resin I'm going to use using supports like this. Also keep in mind, some of the stuff is not going to all clean out, you know, as easy. It's very well susceptible to keep trapped resin inside and something that just may just, it may not dry as quick. It may just keep some of that resin in there. And you're all, you might always have issues with it coming out or seeping out whatsoever. It's just not clean looking. I mean, so which would you rather have this or the grid infill? I prefer the grid infill. Number four, print it like you meant it. 
slow down. You're not in a race. There is absolutely no need to print at warp speed. This is why. Okay, so one thing that I refuse to do is I refuse to speed print because you're going to lose details. You're going to face all kinds of problems and nodding and shifting like that on your prints. And I don't care how long it takes to print a print. I want to get a good quality print. So right here we have a couple of arms and this is like to my Captain America model. But let me show you something here. What most people would do is print this pretty much like this with maybe like go up a little bit on each arm here. They'll kind of bend it so slightly because they want to get this thing printed pretty quickly. Now, that doesn't work for me for two reasons. For one, if you have supports up underneath here, you're going to start biting into this detail here underneath. And as you can see, this is a highly detailed model. So I don't want to do that. Now, one thing I've learned is it doesn't matter if you use light supports, medium supports, or heavy supports. You're still going to have some type of support marks onto this detail. And then you have to get rid of it in order for the model to look right. So if I'm not worried about speed, if I'm not worried about, you know, how long it takes to print or whatever pieces like this, what I will do is I will stand them straight up. So there's nothing the, all the supports are basically up underneath. They're at a slight angle and there's nothing really touching in on the details here. So like, for example, this is what it will look like when you add supports. So you will have some go up into the areas like where there's parts onto the hands there's not a lot in here. So what you will have is you'll have a lot more stabilization. The model will print. It'll take longer to print, but it will print. And with all that detail into there and these supports will only get into some of these areas, which are not highly detailed. That's what you want. You want to be able to print this thing stable, get a really good print off of it, not have to do a lot of post prep work, and then your model will still look great. You won't have to do a lot of sanding to get those divots and those support marks off. And guess what? Your model's going to look great. And also, if you look up underneath here, there's not going to be much supports up into your flat surface where it connects onto the arm. That's going to be minimal. That's also going to be met with a little bit of a seam line right there that is just minimal to clean up. So this is the way to go. If you have a torso, the same thing, you're going to stand this up and you're going to have it straight up in the air where a lot of your support marks do not go into the detail. It's not going to bite into it. It's very minimal. This stuff is very easy to sand right here. If you look where the marks are and it's going to be a good model. And number five, less is more especially when it comes to supports. Let me explain. So when it comes to anything that you want to print that you feel is going to be over supported, one thing that you can do is let's go, for example, let's put a supports on this already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the density percentage. What this does here in Chitu box is it will actually put more or less supports on here, depending on how, you go either up or down in the percentage. So let's say this is 40% right here. And this is typically what I print all of my models with. This is the density I use for my supports. As you can see, it's really nothing overwhelming. Um, it looks like it will support pretty much everything. I think the default on Chitu box is 50%. Now let's remove these and let's put, let's just say 25% on there. And let's see what it looks like. So here I'm going to go ahead and decrease the density percentage down to, let's just say 25%. And I'm going to go ahead and add the supports on here. So there's a little bit less. Is it going to make a huge bit of difference? Yes and no. So it won't make a huge difference in supporting the model but it will make a huge difference in the long run if you start using less density 
and you're going to be using less resin. So there is that that goes along with it. Now, the downside is, is if you don't use enough density, your model's not going to be supported efficiently, but then you'll have issues with it either coming off the build plate or just not printing correctly. So with something like a cape or something to this nature here that has a lot of trickery, a lot of curves, and it could just go south on you really quickly, I don't suggest in using a very low density. I would go back to probably 40%. And then I would just actually go with it because these areas are smooth. There's not a lot of detail in something like this and it's easily sanded off. So that way you won't waste your time or your resin in printing something that's just not going to print right. It's going to fail on you. You don't run that risk. So I would go ahead and support this. You can probably even overly support it if you want. There's cases where I'll actually go and add a few supports on here um, just in case. You know, like I'll just go ahead and add a few up here, especially on the outside. A lot of times it only supports underneath. And as we all know, sometimes these supports actually become unclipped onto the edge right here. So I'll actually add a couple here and there inside and around that way I don't have to worry about any of this coming off and it's extra supported. And again, I don't want to keep wasting a lot of resin on a unsupported piece where I could have prevented it. So that is how you get away with this part. Okay, everybody, I hope those little snippets actually help you out in your printing process. And remember, if you would like to become a member of my Patreon, that link is in the description below. We'd love to have you over on Discord. And as always, I'm gonna give a huge shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you again for the support. And if the Patreon is not for you, just give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and watch more videos. And as always, everybody, stay safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, print, paint, repeat. And until the next video, we'll see you. And remember guys, if you like these videos, you like the instructional videos, you like the tutorials, let me know in the comment section. I'm looking to hear from you. Oh, you can go now. All right. Wanna hang out? That's fine. Okay.